by the President of the United States, Harry S. Truman. We do not wish to see unnecessary or unjustified suffering. But the laws of God and of man have been violated and the guilty must not go unpunished. <laughs> Nothing shall shake our determination to punish the war cri criminal, even though we must pursue them to the ends of the earth. But the president insists on fair trials and appoints Supreme Court Justice Robert H. Jackson to persuade the Allies to the American view. In June, a month after the surrender, Jackson goes to London, seeking agreement with British, French, and Russian representatives on war crime trial procedures. In July, at the Potsdam Conference, Truman still finds resistance to long, drawn-out trials. Churchill is quoted privately as favoring summary executions for six or seven top Nazis. Stalin stubbornly clings to the view he expressed at Tehran when drinking a toast to the quickest possible justice for all German war criminals, the justice of a firing squad. But among Americans, there are those opposed to punishing the Nazi war leaders. Senator Robert A. Taft argues that the state is responsible for criminal acts committed during wartime. Individuals merely obey orders. The trial of the vanquished by the victors, he says, cannot be impartial, no matter how hedged about with forms of justice. Before the trial started, uh, beginning, I think, even before the end of the war, yes, definitely before the end of the war, about what sort of trial you should have. You could have said that the people who committed these murders are murderers and they should be tried and condemned. There was another view, and the other view was that this was a great opportunity to do more. ...that calls upon some of America's outstanding legal talent who will join forces with the most eminent jurists of Great Britain, France... But prodded by Truman's insistence that civilization has a right to defend itself, Jackson presses negotiations with the Allied representatives. British Attorney General Sir David Maxwell Fife, Soviet Major General I.J. Nikichenko, and Judge Robert Falco of France. I am convinced that we have an opportunity to bring to a just judgment those who have thought it safe to wage aggressive and ruthless war. An historic meeting in London was held. The chiefs of council for France, Russia, Great Britain, and the United States signed the International Military Tribunal Charter, establishing the laws by which the major war criminals will be tried. <laughs>